everybody. Mr. G here today to talk about the first lesson now in a fundamental concept that you're going to need throughout your entire unit or multiple units in kinematics, dynamics, energy, and the whole bit. And it's this idea of scalars versus vector. Now, for those of you who know the serial, we're not talking about vector serial, although I must admit Vince Carter was a huge fan of that back in the day, probably way before your guys' time at this point. Uh, but let's talk about these two concepts. Uh, when we're talking about a scalar, okay, we're talking about a quantity that only has a magnitude. So the example of a scalar would be like six meters. Okay, you'll notice that I don't give you any context of the number, I just say it's six meters. Now, a vector quantity, on the other hand, it has a magnitude, it has, it has a value, but it also has a direction. So we can talk about it six meters west. Now you're not only given the magnitude, but you're also given which direction it's going. And when we talk about vectors and we actually have to draw them, we deal with these in terms of arrows. If we have something like distance, we're going to represent distance with a lowercase d, and we're just going to call that the separation between two points. Okay, So we have two points in space, and the distance between, that's the distance. Now, is there a scalar or a vector? Well, when I'm talking about the distance between two points, I'm not talking relative to one point or the other. Uh, I don't have any sort of reference point. Uh, midway or at some point in between. Therefore, all we're talking about is just the whole value, the actual magnitude. So in this case, we're talking about a scalar. So distance is always a scalar quantity. But displacement, now notice the difference in words, right? Displacement, we're going to label that with a delta, which is Greek letter delta, and then a bold cased D. Okay, so You'll notice that I've changed it a bit. We're not just saying delta D where it's just regular type. We're actually talking about a bold font. And now we're talking about the measure of the change in position. Okay, so notice the key word there is I'm giving some kind of position to go off of. And from there, we're going to measure the change from that position. And this is where the actual direction is going to come in. So delta D is just equal to the final position minus the initial position, whatever that may be and the sign of the value will indicate the direction. So in a previous uh, lesson, we talked about the idea that negatives and positives uh, don't necessarily mean what they do in mathematics. When we talk about that, we're talking about number line and whatnot. Similar idea here, except now we're actually talking about direction. If you're dealing with something traveling east and you deal with all this mathematics and you end up with a negative value, that means it's actually going opposite east, so in the west. You're going to see this more clearly as we go along. So when we ask the question, is displacement a scalar vector? Well, I think it's pretty obvious at this point. Being that we're dealing with a position, we're definitely dealing with a vector. So, let's give you a prime example. We have here the two cars that I have in my garage. Well, at least one of those. Uh, and we have car A and car B. And we have it on a number line because for the beginnings, it's going to make a little more sense into what we're talking about. So, first question we're going to ask is, what is the distance from car A? Or to car A from car B. Well, again, we're just talking about the distance in between, right like that. There is no relative to what, there's no positioning. So in this case, we have no units either. We just add them up, we end up with nine. We start at negative two, we end up at seven. That's definitely a positive nine. Now, what is the distance uh, of car B from car A? Well, again, we've switched the direction that we're looking. But again, we don't need to know anything else uh, about the actual positioning. So we're just talking about raw value again. So that 2 is going to be 9. So with distance, it doesn't matter, right? We're just looking for the distance between two points. But now, what is the position of either car? Well, when we're taking a look at car A, well, when we're dealing with a number line, let's just deal with a number line. Let's say it's two units. To the left, right? So zero would be our, our starting point, and we're saying, well, it's two units to the left, right? So two units to the left of zero. Um, you know what? Let's put that down anyway. Of zero. Okay? So what's the position of car B? Well, now we have seven units to the right of zero. So there's really nothing we can do. Uh, about position until we establish some sort of origin, right? So if we considered car A the origin, then the position of car A would be zero, and then car B would be nine units to the right of car A. So again, this idea of relativity and whatnot, we're going to deal with 
ad nauseum this uh, term. So what is the displacement of car A measured from car B? Well, see, we're starting here and we're looking to the left. Now, much like the number uh, line, when you're going left, that means we're actually going negative. Now, what does this mean here? Well, you notice how the arrow is pointing to the left. Let's just call it to the left. So instead of just nine units, we have nine units left, right? We, we make B our origin point, and we're going nine units to the left to get to A. So I bet you, you know what the displacement of car A measured from car, or sorry, car B measured from car A is. Well, if we call A our origin, how many units does it take to get to B? It takes nine units, and which direction did we go? We went right. So there's a difference here. We have our idea of just plain magnitudes at the beginning, but as soon as you start adding a direction involved er, to the mix, you're going to end up with something uh, a little more specific. So let's take a look at an example now where we're actually going to have to deal with the difference between scalar and vector and actually have to add them or subtract them. A student walks five meters east and then three meters west. And we're going to ask the two questions, what is the distance traveled and of course what is the student's displacement. Now you notice how I've labeled that distance is a scalar and displacement is a vector. As a reminder now, obviously in future questions, you're not going to get that nice little hint. So for part A, uh, we're just talking about the value. We're talking about how far the student actually walked. So they traveled five meters somewhere and then they traveled three meters somewhere else. So we add up the distances. They traveled a total of eight meters. Again, because it's a scalar, we don't care which way they went so far as they traveled eight meters. Now with B, instead of just dealing with this in terms of quantity, we also have to deal with direction. So when I talk about direction, the fact we're given east and west, I want to remind you of this, the fact that we, of course, have established directions in our system, uh, northeast, south, and west. So when we go to draw the five meter east vector, we can draw something like this. This length is relative to whatever you want it to be, and the fact that this is five meters means that when we draw our three meter west, it had better be shorter and pointing the opposite way. It makes sense, right? Now, what's our answer? Well, it's that little chunk that we haven't uh, accounted for yet, and it's that two meters that we traveled to the east more than we traveled west. Well, this vector has a special name. It is called the resultant, or the net vector. Uh, you're gonna see me, specifically, write it more like this with a nice little arrow above. All vectors, when you're dealing with vector notation, tend to have an arrow. Now, it could be a full arrow, uh, or like I did, a half arrow, kind of uh, funky-looking L thing. But this all falls under the system of adding vectors by the tip-to-tail method. And you're going to hear me say this again a whole bunch for the rest of the lesson, but it's the idea that we had this tip, we added it to that tail, and then what do we get? We get a resultant. So it's a little harder when they're collinear, uh, but you'll see a lot easier when we get into this idea of two-dimensional uh, type motion. So tip to tail, uh, remember it because you're going to use it a whole bunch. So let's get into another example. A polar bear meanders because they take their time, they're polar bears. 275 meters east and then turns around and ambles 425 meters west. What was the distance traveled again? Distance is just a scalar, so add them up. 275 meters plus 425 meters. That's going to give you a total of 700 meters. In what direction? We don't care. It's a distance. But what was the bear's displacement? Well, let's draw that arrow yet again. He started off, let's say from here, he traveled 275 meters to the east. And what did he do? He said, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go home. And he traveled backwards 425 meters to the west, which gives us the resultant of this nice little section right here. So what's our answer then? Well, our answer is going to be um, 425 subtract 275, which equals 150 meters and in what direction? Well, you see which way it's pointing. That is definitely going west. Now, if you had flipped this around and said that right was positive and left was negative, you would have ended up with a number of negative 150 meters. But what does that mean? That means that it is traveling 
the opposite direction of what your positive was, which is east, which now implies west. So like I say, negatives and positives uh, are more than just symbols in physics. Now, let's take a look at a different example to sort of establish th this philosophy uh, as concretely as we can. A little girl takes her dog for a walk around the city. Block is shown. You'll notice how she starts here, and she travels there, and then there, and then there, and then there. So you'll notice all of these vectors add up to a nice, pretty square. And the first question we're going to ask is, what is the distance traveled? Well, the distance traveled is simply however much walking was done. So in this case, we're going to add up all of these distances, right? Because it's just distance traveled, you should get 480 meters, okay? So for part B, let's ask, well, what's her final displacement? Remember, we started right there at the start. We went around in a square and we ended up at the finish. This is super easy. It's zero meters. Why? Because she went all the way around. So if you end up where you started from, then you're going to end up with a total displacement of zero. A classic example would be something like driving in the Indy 500. You're going to travel 500 miles, but you're going around in a loop, which means your total displacement after four hours of driving is only going to be a whopping zero meters. But now what happens if we're looking for her total displacement at B? Now we didn't go all the way around, we are right smack dab here. Which means what have we done? We've traveled some distance to the east and some distance south. Well our total displacement is how far we've traveled from uh, the origin. Well that's just this distance right here. And boy wouldn't you know it, that sure looks like a right angled triangle to me. If we call this R, how are we going to find R? Well we're going to say that r is equal to the square root of 125 squared plus 115 squared. How in the world did I get that equation? You'd better know Pythagorean theorem. And if you get that, you should end up with an answer of 169.8, but let's just call that 170 meters. So the question is, is saying southeast just enough? Well, the answer is no, not really, because if we're traveling southeast, that means it is directly halfway in between, angular-wise, between east and south. But that's not actually true. If we take a look at what theta is, well, if we find out what tangent theta is, tangent of theta is equal to 125 divided by 115, which means theta is actually equal to 47.4 degrees. So. The answer isn't that it's 170 meters southeast, it's actually equal to 170 meters, 47.4 degrees south of east. And if that whole south of east thing trips you up, don't worry, we're going to go over that ad nauseum in a second. But let's go ahead and ask the, the final question. What was her displacement at C? Well, she's down here which means these two east and west vectors will cancel each other out. Why? They're equal but opposite, which means the only displacement that's occurred is the actual vector of her traveling south, this one right here, which means her displacement at C is 125 meters, and that is certainly to the south. Okay, so trickier, trickier. Notice how Pythagorean theorem came up. Notice how trig came up. Notice how just rationalizing what's going on came up, right? You got to be certain about all the math before. So I did that whole south of east thing and some of you may be like, well, what's that all about? Well, let's take a look at these examples. If we if we see that our, our rows over here with northeast, southwest, right? And we draw our line in between like this. All you have to do when we're talking about south of east and north of west and all these ideas is where is the angle being measured from and which way is the vector pointing as a result. So in this case you'll notice that it is pointing to the right. It's pointing some right and some up, therefore it's definitely dealing with something to the east. And is the vector above or below it? In this case it's ab above it, which means it is to the north. So we call this north of east, whatever the angle is. Taking a look at the other ones, well 
this is to the north, that vector is to the west, so in this case we call it west of north. How about this one? It's pointing down and to the right, which means that's south, that has to be east. We are now talking about east of south. With number four now, again it's pointing down to the left. Uh, down means south, left means west. This has to be west of south. And with five we have north. It is to the right of that, which is east. So we call that east of north. And finally, with number six, we have a vector that is pointing to the left and up. So in this case, we are north of which direction? Well, that has to be west. And my friends, it's just that easy. So you know, know your cardinal positions and be able to figure out which way the angle is being measured off that. Okay. So we come to the last part of this lesson, and it's probably the trickier part of it all. And it's the idea of actually taking these particular uh, questions now and getting the resultant in terms of the right direction. So I'm going to leave these for you to do. Um, I can tell you that for number one, you should end up with an answer of 29 meters, 59 degrees north of east. I will also tell you that for number three, you should end up with 0 0.4 meters south. And just because I'm feeling generous for number five, you should end up with an answer of 42.4 meters, 45 degrees east of south. And I think you probably know what 45 degrees east of south can also be named. So that's all I'm giving you for answers. Uh, I hope you do well. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, until then, good luck, my friends, and we'll talk to you again.